Hello. Let's get that going. So tonight is going to be a little bit different for the people viewing. I am going to read The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. Um, for a few hours, starting at chapter one, and if anybody would like to join the discussion with, if this continues going with the next book, after I'm finished with this book, um, hit explanation point discord, and join our discord channel, and you can join into the Stanford Book Club. Um, I believe I will get through about four chapters and then the last half hour to 45 minutes of the book, um, of the stream, I will be discussing certain chapters of it and certain takes and points. And I'd love your guys' um, input in chat. Um, when people come in and talk, I'll also pause probably reading to say hello. Um... For many people who know, I am dyslexic and I am hard of reading. So instead of hard of hearing, I'm hard of reading. Certain words in the English language throw me for a loop. So it might take me a minute. And if that's something you don't like, oh well. If not, hope you enjoy it. Um, certain words, because this is written in Old English is what I say. Um, I will also be, I have Google up on my other screen right now, and certain words, I don't know what they mean. So this is also going to be an educational factor in it, and if there's a word that I don't understand or don't know the full meaning of, I will be Googling it and depicting it. So with that being said, we will get started. Chapter 1. To Sherlock Holmes, she is always the woman. I have seldom heard him mention her under any other name. In his eyes, she eclipses and pro predeterminates the whole of her sex. It was not that he felt any emotion akin to love for Irene Adler. All emotions, and that one particular, were Why would you try and revive there? abhorrent. Abhorrent. Let's look at that word. A B H O R E N T. Abhorrent. abhorrent. I was saying it right. Inspiring disgust and loathing, it means. Abhorrent to his cold. Precise but admirable balanced mind. He was, I take it, the most perfect reasoning and observing menace that the world has seen. But as a lover, he would have placed himself in a false position. He never spoke of the softer passions, save with a gib and a sneer. They, would, they were admirable things for the observer. Observer excellent for drawing the veil from men's motives and actions. But for the trained reasoner to admit such in terrestrians in intrusions sorry admit such intrusions into his own decalt and final adjustment temperament was to introduce a distracting factor which might throw a doubt upon all his mental results Grit and a sensitive instrument, or a crack in one of his own high power. Lessons would not be more disturbing than a strong emotion in a nature such as his. And yet, there was but one woman to him, 
and that woman was the late Irene Adler of dubious and questionable memory. I had seen little of Holmes lately. My marriage had drifted us away from each other. My own complete happiness and the home centered interests which rise up around the man who first finds himself master of his own establishment were suffered to were suffered suffered that's a different word let's look that one up Sufficient. Oh, sufficient. Never mind. Sufficient were sufficient to absorb all my attention. While Holmes, who loathed every form of society with his whole body, bohemian soul, remind, remained in our lodgings in Baker Street. Buried among his old books and alternating from week to week between cocaine and abit ambition. The drowsiness of the drug and the fierce energy of his own keen nature, he was still as ever deeply attracted by the study of crime and occupied his immense spectacles and extraordinary powers of observation in following out those clues and clearing up those mysteries which had been abandoned as hopeless by his official official police from time to time i heard some vague account of his doings of his summons and odyssey in the case of the tra trap off murder of his clearing up of the singular tragedy of the Atkins brothers at Train Company, and finally of the mission which he had accomplished so delicately and successfully for the regaining family of Holland. Beyond these signs of his active activeness however which i merely shared with all the readers of the daily press i knew little of my former friend and companion one night it was on the 20th of march 1888 i was returning from a journey to a patient for i had now returned to civil practice when my way led me through baker street as I passed the well-remembered door, which must always be associated in my mind with my wooing and with the dark incense of the study in Scarlet, I was seized with a keen desire to see Holmes again and to know how he was employing, employing his extraordinary powers. His rooms were brilliantly lit, and even as I looked up, I saw his tall, spar figure pass twice in a dark silhouette against the blind. He was pacing the room swiftly, eagerly, with his hand snuck upon his chest and his hands clasped behind him. To me, who knew his every mood and habit, his attitude and manner told their own story he was at work again he had risen out of his drug created dream and was hot upon the scent of some new problem i rang the bell and was shown up Hi. to the chamber which had firmly been in part my own his manner was not effective affected if not a fusion I want to make sure I'm saying this right guys sorry e -f 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 -f
Effusive. Ah, effusive, which means expressing feelings of gratitude, pleasure, or approval. Not effusive. It seldom was, but he was glad, I think, to see me, with hardly a word spoken. But with a kindly, a kindly eye, he waved me to an armchair, threw across his case of cigar, cigars, and indicated a Sprite case and a gasogain in the corner. Gas of gin in the corner. Then he stood before the fire and looked me over in his singular intro intrusive fashion. A wedlock suits you, he remarks. I think, Watson, that you have put on seven and a half pounds since I saw you. Seven, I answered. Indeed, I should have thought a little more. Just a truff more, I fancy, Watson. And in particular, in practice again, I observe, you did not tell me that you intended to go into harness. Then how do you know? I see it. I deduce it. How do I know that you have been getting yourself very wet lately and that you have a most clumsy and oh, careless servant girl? My, my dear Holmes, said I, this is too much. You would certainly have been burned. Had you lived a few centuries ago, it is true that I had a country walk on Thursday and came home in a dreadful mess, but I have changed my clothes. I can't imagine how you detected it, deduced it. As to Mary Jane, she is incredibly <laughs> incorrigible, and my wife has given her notice, but there again, I fail to see how you work it out. He chuckled to himself and rubble, rubbed his long, nervous hands together. It is simplicity itself, said he. My eyes tell me that on the inside of your left shoe, just where the firelight strikes it, the leather is scored by six almost par parallel cuts. Obviously, they have been caused by someone who has very carelessly scraped round the edges of the sole in order to remove crusted mud from it. Hence, you see my double... <laughs> Alex, stop tickling my feet! My daughter's tickling my feet. <sighs> Sorry, where was I? Obviously, they have been ca caused by someone who has very carelessly scraped round the edges of the sole in order to remove crushed mud from it. Hence, you see my double detection that you had been out in valley weather, vile weather. And that you had a particular ma mangle um let's look this word up. I wanna know what it means. It's a different word for basically mangling. Malignant. Ah. Particularly mal malignant boot slitting specimen of the London slave. Slavey, as to your practice, if a gentleman walks into my room smelling of idoform with a black mark of a nirate of silver upon his right fore finger and a bulge on the right side of his top hat to show where he has where he has centered his stethoscope I must be dull indeed if I do not pronounce him to be an active num member of the medical profession I could not help laughing at the ease with which he exclaimed 
his process of detection. When I hear you give your reasoning, you your reason, I remarked the thing always appears to me to be so ridiculous. Simply that I could easily do it myself, though at each success, successive incense, intense, right? Alex, you need to stop. Go to daddy. You need to ask daddy. Alex, stop. Successive. It is successive. It just doesn't look like successive. <laughs> successive insight of your reasonings. I am baffled until you explain your process, and yet I believe that my eyes are as good as yours. Quite so, he answered, lighting a cigarette and throwing himself down into an armchair. You see, but you do not observe. The detection is clear. For example, you have frequently seen the steps which lead up from the hall to this room. Frequently. How often? Well, some hundreds of times. Then how many are there? How many? I don't know. Quite so. You have not observed, and yet you have seen. That is just my point. Now, I know there are 17 steps because I have both seen and observed. By the way, since you are interested in these little problems, and since you are good enough to chronicle, chronically, chronicle one or two of my triffing expressions you may be interested in this he threw over a sheet of thick pink tinted note paper which had been lying open on the table it came by the last post he said he read it out loud the note was undated and without either signature or address there will call upon you tonight at a quarter to eight o'clock it said a gentleman who desires to consult you upon a matter of the very deepest moment. Your recent services to one of the royal houses of Europe have shown that you are one who may safely be trusted with matters which are of, of an utmost importance, which can hardly be extracted. Extrated. Okay. Hang on. Words are hard, guys. Exaggerated. Ah. Can hardly be exaggerated. This account of you... We have been all quarters received. Be in your chamber then at that hour and do not take it amiss if your visitor wear a mask. This is indeed a mystery, I remarked. What do you imagine that this that it means? I have no data yet. It is a capital mistake to theorize before one has. Data. Incessant, insensible, one begins to twist facts to suit theories instead of theories to suit facts. But the note itself, what do you detect from it? I carefully examined the writing and the paper upon which it was written. The man who wrote it was presumably well-to-do, I remarked. In devoting to immediate my companion's process such paper could not be bought under half a crown a packet 
It is particularly strong and stiff. Particular, peculiar that it, that is the very word said Holmes. It is not an English paper at all. Hold it up to the light. I did so and saw a large E with a small G, a P and a large G with a small T woven into the texture of the paper. What do you make of that? Asked Holmes. The name of the marker, no doubt, or his monogram, rather. Not at all. The G with the small T stands for Jesselk's Craft, which is the German for company. It is a customary con construction, like our co P, of course. Stands for pa Piper. Now for the EG, let us glance at our con conjunctural gasters. Oh oh Let's look I that word up because I that is a very interesting word. A con. Um, nope, there's no O in that. And Yo, hi Linux, how are you? How's your day going? I'm doing pretty well. I am doing great. I am reading The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes out loud. We are on chapter one still. We are also diving deep in wording because English language is hard and words are hard. Gazetteer. Gazetteer. That is how you pronounce that. Gazetteer is how you pronounce it. He took down a heavy brown volume from his sleeve. Eglo. Eglost. Here we are. Egra. It is in a German speaking country in Bohemia. Not for. F not far from Carlsbund. Remarkable as being the scene of the death of Wallingston and for its numerous glass factories and paper mills. Mills. Ha ha, my boy, what do you make of th that? His eyes sparkled and he set up a great blue trumpet cloud from his cigarette. The paper was made in Bohemia. Stop. Go talk to Daddy, please. The paper was made in Bohemia, I said. Precisely. And the man who wrote the note is a German. Do you note the particular cons construction of the sentence? This account of you we have from all quarters received. A Frenchman or Russian could not have written that. It is the German who so uncordially to his verbs. It only remains, therefore, to discover what is wanted by this German, who writes upon bohemian paper and prefers wearing a mask to showing his face. And here he comes, if I am not mistaken, to resolve all our doubts. As he spoke, there was the sharp sound of horses' hoofs and gathering wheels against the curb, followed by a sharp pull at the bell. Holmes whistled, a pair by the sound, said he. Yes, he continued, glancing out the wi of the window. A nice little... 
bro brogem and a pair of beauties a thousand and fifty guineas a piece there's money in this case Watson if there is nothing else I think that I had better go Holmes not a bit doctor stay where you are I am lost without my boss well and this promise promises to be interesting it would be a pity to miss it but your client never mind him I may want your help and so may he here he comes sit down in that armchair doctor and give us your best attention a slow and heavy step which had been heard upon the stairs and in the passage paused immediately outside the door then there was a loud and audibly tap come in said Holmes a man entered who could hardly have been less than six feet six inches in height with the chest and limbs of a of a Hercules his dress with rich with a richness which would in England be looked upon as akin to bad taste heavy bands of astrakhan were laced across the sleeves and fronts of his double breasted coat while the deep blue cloak which was thrown over his shoulders was lined with flame colored silk and scarred as the neck with a brooch which consisted of a single film flaming braille boots which extended halfway up his calves and which were trimmed at the tops with rich brown fur completed the impression of barbaric opulence opulence which was suggested by his whole appearance he carried a broad brimmed hat in his hand while he wore across the upper part of his face extending down past his the cheekbones a black vizard mask which he had apparently adjusted at that very moment for his hand was still raised to his it as he and entered from the lower part of the face he appeared to be a man of strong character with a thick hanging lip and a long straight chin suggestive of res resolution pushed to the length of observation you had my note he asked with a deep harsh voice and a sh and and a strongly marked German accent I told you that I would call him. he looked from one to the other of us as if uncertain which to address pray take a seat said Holmes this is my friend and colleague dr. Watson who is occasionally good enough to help me in my cases whom have I the honor to address you may address me as the Count von Karman a boho bohemian nobleman I understand that this gentleman your friend is a man of honor and discretion whom I may trust with a matter of the most extreme importance if not I should much prefer to communicate with you alone I rose to go but Holmes caught me by the wrist and pushed me back into my chair it is both or none said he Ooh. you may say before the gentleman anything which you may say to me the count shrugged his broad shoulders then I must begin said he by biding you both to absolute secrecy for two years at the end of that time the matter will be of no importance at present it is not too much to say that it is of such weight it may have influence upon European history I promise said Holmes and I 
You will excuse this mask, continued our strange visitor. visitor. The ut guest person who employs me wishes his agent to be unknown to you. And I may confess at once that the title by which I have just called myself is not exactly my own. I was aware of it, said Holmes dryly. The circumstances are of great delicacy and every precaution has to be taken to quench what might grow to be an immense scandal and seriously come promise one of the re reigning families of Europe. To speak plainly, plainly, the matter implicates the great house of Ormston. Ormston, heritage child kings of Brohemon. Uh, Bro Sorry to interrupt. I was just wondering how often do reading. How often do you, how often do I do reading videos? Let me make sure I'm saying that. Yes. Uh, this is actually my first night doing it. Um, so excuse the little, um, I did say in the beginning of the video, which was a little while ago, but I will, since you're new here, I will answer any question that you have. I am Clueless Wolf Hunter, um, and I am starting reading the Sherlock Holmes, the adventure of Sherlock Holmes right now, every other weekend on, or every other week on Monday nights. So this will be a twice a month thing at the moment to see how it goes and how many people are interested in it. Um, I am dyslexic. I have a hard time pronouncing certain words. Um, so half, some of, sometimes you will hear me either stop or, um, look over at my other screen to type in a word or a sentence. So I am saying it right. Cause if we all know English is hard and words do not make sense in the English, in English language, <laughs> but I hope you enjoy it. And right now we are on still chapter one of The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. If you would like to see more and get more updates about books and also have a vote in certain books that I read in the future, you can hit explanation discord and join the discord that I'm a part of. And there is a book club. Thank you for the follow. I'm so happy, Nemo. So let's get back to this. Okay. I was also aware of that. Murmured Holmes, settling himself down in his armchair and closing his eyes. Our visitor glanced with some apparent surprise at the languid, loaning figure of the man who had been no doubt depicted to him as the most insensitive reasoner and most enraged agent in Europe. Holmes slowly reopened his eyes and looked imperturbably at his cigar, or his gigantic client, sorry. If your majesty would considered to state your case, he remarked, I should be better able to advise you. If your majesty would consider, or sorry, the man sprung from his chair and paced up and down the room in uncontrollable agitation. Then, with a gesture of dis desperation, he tore the mask from his face and hurled it upon the ground. You are right, he cried. I am the king. Why should I attempt to conceal it? Why indeed, murmured Holmes. Your majesty had not spoken before I was aware that I was addressing William Wilhelm Gatris Singesmann. That is a German name. 
that I'm not even going to try and pronounce because that's a German name. Von Ormstrand, Grand Duke of Cecil Philstein and her heritor of King of Bro Brohima. Brohima. Brohemian. Brohemian. Oh my gosh. I'm going to like stutter over that word multiple times tonight. But you can understand, said our strange visitor, sitting down once more and passing his hand over his high white forehead. You can understand that I am not a, a, accustomed to doing such business in my own person. Yet the matter was so delicate that I could not confined it to an agent without putting myself in his power. I have come incognito from Prague for the purpose of consulting you. Then pray consult, said Holmes, shutting, shutting his eyes once more. The facts are briefly these. Some five years ago, during a lengthy visit to Warsaw, I made the acquaintance of the well-known adventuress Irene Adler. The name is no doubt familiar to you. Kindly look her up in my index. Doctor, murmured Holmes without opening his eyes. For many years he had adopted a system of docketing all paragraphs concerning men and things so that it was difficult to name a subject or a person on which he could not at once furnish information. In this case, I found her biography sandwiched in between that of a Hebrew rabbi and that of a staff commander who had written a monograph upon the deep sea fishes. Let me see, said Holmes. Hum. Born in New Jersey in the year 1858. Canthro, hmm, Lascal, hmm, Prima, Prima Donna, Imperial Opera of Warsaw. Yes, retired from a opera thuck stage. Huh, living in London. Quite so. Your Majesty, as I understand, became entangled with this young person, wrote her some pro promising letters, and is now, and is now desires of getting those letters back. Preciously so, but how? Was there a secret marriage? None. No legal papers or certificates? None. Then I fail to follow your majesty. If this young person should produce her letters for blackmailing or other purposes, how is she to prove they're authentic? There is the writing. Poo poo forge. My private note paper. Stolen. My own seal. Intimidated. My photograph bought we were both in the photo oh dear that is very bad your majesty has indeed committed an indecency i was mad insane you have compromised yourself seriously compromised yourself seriously i was only crown prince then i was young i am but 30 now it must be recovered we have tried and failed your majesty must pay it must be bought. She will not sell. Stolen, then? Five attempts have been made. Twice burglars in my pay ransacked her house. Once we diverted her luggage when she traveled. Twice she had she been waylaid. Waylaid. These has been no, there has been no results. No sign of it. Absolutely none. Holmes laughed. It is quite a pretty little problem, said he, but a very serious one to me, returned the king reproachfully.
Very indeed. And what does the does she propose to do with the photograph? To ruin me. But how? I'm about to be married. So I have heard. To cut. I'm not even going to try. Let me look this up so I don't butcher this name because, again, Clotilde Lothman von Saxmeningen. Clotilde Lothman von Saxmeningen. Clothlin Lothman we'll go with to Kathleen Lothman von Saxman second daughter of the king of Scandinavia you may know the strict principles of her family she is herself the very soul of delicacy a shadow of a doubt as to many conduct would bring the matter to an end and Irene Adler threatens to send them the photograph and she will do it I know that she will do it you do not know her but she has a soul of steel she has the face of the most beautiful of women and the mind of the most result of men Rather than I should marry another woman, there are no lengths to which she would not go. None. You are sure that she has not sent it yet. I am sure. And why? Because she has said that she would send it on the day when the betrothal was publicly proclaimed. That will be next Monday. Oh, then we have three days yet, said Holmes with a yawn. That is very fortunate, as I have one or two matters of importance to look into, just as percent. Your Majesty will, of course, stay in London for the percent. Certainly, you will find me at the Langham under the name of the Count von Karman. Then I shall drop you a line to let you know how we progress. Pray do so. I shall be all anxiety. Then as to money, you have Cardi Blanche. Absolutely. I tell you that I would give one of the province of my kingdom to have that for photograph. And for present expenses, the king took a heavy chamois a leather bag from under his cloak and laid it on the table. There are 300 pounds in gold and silver in gold and silver hundred in notes he said holmes scrabbled a receipt upon a sheet of his notebook and handed it to him and madame moselle's address he asked madame moselle's address he asked is browning lodge sarpenton avenue st john's wood holmes took a note of it one other one other question he said was the photograph a cabinet it was then good night your majesty and i trust that we shall soon have some good news for you and good night watson he added as the wheels of the real brougham rolled down the street if you will be good enough to call tomorrow afternoon at three o'clock i should like to chat this little matter over with you Chapter 2 At three o'clock, precisely, I was at Baker Street, but Holmes had not yet returned. The landlady informed me that he had left the house shortly after eight o'clock in the morning. I sat down beside the fire, however, with the intention of awaiting him, however long he might be. I was already deeply intensed in his interested in his inquiry for though it was surrounded by none of the grim and strange features which were associated with the two crimes which i have already recorded still the nature of the case and the ex ex exiled station 
of his client gave it a character of its own. Indeed, apart from the nature of the investigation, which my friend had on hand, there was something in his mat magistral grasp of a situation and his keen incisive reasoning which made it a pleasure to me to study his system of work and to follow the quick sub, sub subtle men mentions by which he dis disentangled the most in excusable mysteries so accustomed let me look that word up hang on i don't want to butcher it accustomed no oh, it is a custom okay a custom was i to his in visible success that the very possibility of his failing had ceased to enter into my head it was close upon four before the door opened and a drunken looking looking groom ill kept and side whiskered with an inflamed inflamed face and dis re troubled closed walked into the room accustomed as i was to my friend's amazing powers and the use of disguises i had to look three times before i was certain that it was indeed he with a nod he vanished into the bedroom which he emerged in five minutes twice and respectable as of old putting his hands into his pockets he stretched out his legs in front of the fire and laughed heartily for this for some minutes. Well, really, he cried. And then he choked and laughed again until he was ob obligated to lie back, limp and helpless in the chair. What is it? It's quite too funny. I am sure you could never guess how I employed my morning. Or what I ended up by doing. I can't imagine. I suppose that you have been watching the habits and perhaps the house of Miss Irene Adley. Adler? Quite so. But the sequel was rather unusual. I will tell you, however, I left the house a little after 8 o'clock this morning. In the character of a groom out of work. There, in a wonderful sympathy, sympathy and free man, mansoner among horse, horsey men, be one of them, and you will know all that there is to know. I soon found Brony Lodge. It is a bijou vale, vela with a garden at the back, but built out in front right up to the road two stories chab lock to the door large sitting room on the right side well furnished with long windows almost to the floor and those pre prestigious english windows uh, fasteners which a child could open behind there was nothing remarkable Save that the passage window could be reached from the top of the couch house. Coach house. I walked around it and examined it closely from every point of view, but without nothing, anything else of interest. I then lounged down the street and found, as I expected, that three was a muse in a lane. There was a muse in a lane which runs down by one well wall of the garden. I lent the ostlers a hand in rubbing down three horses and received in exchange two pennants, a glass of half and half, two fills of sag tobacco, and of as much information as I could desire about Miss Adler. 
to say nothing of a half dozen other people in the neighborhood in whom I was not in the least interested, but whose biography I was compelled to listen to. And what of Irene Adler, I asked. Oh, she has turned all the men's heads down in that part. She is the desonant thing under a bonnet on this planet. So they say, Serpeneth Muse, to a man. She lives quietly, sings at concerts, drives out a five every day, drives out at five every day, and returns at seven sharp for dinner. Seldom goes out at other times, except when she sings. Has only one male visitor, but a good deal of him. He is dark, handsome, and rather never calls less than once a day. And often twice, he is a Mr. Godifer Norton. Of the inner temple, she is the adventuress of a cob man. As a confidant, they have driven him home a dozen times from Sarpenton Mews and knew all about him. When I had listened to all they had to tell, I began to walk up and down near Brony Lodge once more and to think over my plan of com company. My plan of company. This Godfrey Norton was eventually an important factor in the matter. He was a lawyer that sounded anonymous. What was the relation, relation between them? And what the object of his repent visits, repeated visits? Was she his client, his friend, or his mistress? If the former she had probably transferred the photograph to his keeping. If the letter, it was less likely. On the issues of this question depended whether I should con continue my work at Browning Lodge or turn my attention to the gentleman's chambers in the temple. It was a delicate point and it winded the field of my injury inquiry. I fear that I bore you with these details, but I have to let you see my little difficulties. If you are to understand the situation, I am following you closely, I answer. I was still balancing the matter in my mind when a handsome cab drove in up to Brony Lodge. Yeah, I will be right back, guys. I got a uh, emergency with my child, so give me like five minutes and I will be right back.
Okay. I believe I am back and I'm all set. Okay, let me... Okay, where was I? Um... Nope, that's not it. I said, I am following you closely, I answered. I was still balancing the matter in my mind when a handsome cab drove up to Burning Lodge. And a gentleman sprung out. He was a remarkably handsome man, dark, eloquent, and monstrous. Eventually, the man of whom I had heard, he appeared to be in a grand, grand hurry, great hurry, shouted to the cabman to wait and brushed past the maid who opened the door with the air of a man who was thor thoroughly at home. He was in the house after about half an hour and I could catch glimpses of him in the windows of the sitting room, pacing up and down, talking excitedly and waving his arms. Of course, I could see nothing. Presently, he emerged looking even more flur flurried than before. As he stepped up to the cab, he pulled a gold watch from his pocket and looked at it in inertly. Drive like the devil, he shouted, frisked to Gross and Hankley's in Reg Regent Street, and then the Church of St. Monic, and the edge where... Edgeware Ware Road. Half a guinea if you do it in a tw in in it in twenty minutes. Away they went, and I was just wondering whether I should not do well to follow them. When up the lane came a neat little landu. The couch coachman with his coat only half buttoned, and his tie under his ear. While all the tags of his harness were sticking out of the buckles it hadn't pulled up before she shot out the hell hall door and into it i only caught a glimpse of her at the moment but she was a lovely woman with a face that a man might die for the church of saint monic john she cried and a half of a sovereign if you reach it in 20 minutes this was quite too good to lose watson I was just balancing whether I should run for it or whether I should pay prince, prince behind her landu with when a cab came through the street. The driver looked twice at such a shabby fare, but I jumped in before he could object. The Church of St. Monic, and I and said I, and half a sovereign if you reach it in 20 minutes. It was 25 minutes to 12, and of course it was clear enough what was in the wind. My cabbie drove, cabbie drove fast. I don't think I ever drove faster, but the others were th there before us. The cab and the landu, with their steaming horses, were in front of the door. When I arrived, I paid the man and hurried into the church. There was not a soul there. There. Save the two whom I had followed and a surplice cl clergyman, 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 bleh, who seemed to be explosing with them. They were all three standing in a knot in front of the altar. I lounged up the side aisles like any other idol who has dropped into a church suddenly to my surprise the three at the altar faced round to me and godfrey norton came running as hard as he could towards me thank god he cried you'll do come come what then i asked come man come only three minutes or it won't be legal i was half dragged up to the altar and before i knew it there knew where i was I found myself mumbling responses 
which were whispered in my ear and vouching for things of which I knew nothing and generally assisting in the sense tying up Irene Adler's spinster to Godfrey Norton. Bachelor. It was all done in an instant. And there was the gentleman thanking me on the one side and the lady on the other while the clergyman beamed on me in front. It was the most pre presbyterious position in which I ever found myself in my life. And it was the thought of it that started me laughing just now. It seems that there had been some informational about their license that the clergyman clergyman absolutely refused to marry them without a witness of some sort and that my lucky appearance saved the bridegroom from having to sally to sally out into the streets in search of a best man the bride gave me a souvenir souvenir and i mean to wear it on my watch chain in memory of the occasion this is a very unexpected uh turn of affairs said i and what then well i found my plans very seriously i found my plans very seriously man man managed it looked as if the pair might take an un intimidated departure and so necessary very prompted and in energetic measures on my part at the church door however they separated he driving back to the temple and she to her own house i shall drive out in the park at five as usual she says as she lifts left him i heard no more they drove away in different directions and i went off to make my own arrangements which are some cold beef and a glass of beer he answered ringing the bell i have been too busy to think of food and i am likely to be busier still this evening by the way doctor i shall want your co-opinion i shall be delighted you don't mind breaking the law not in the least nor running a chance of arrest not in a good case oh the case is excellent then i am your man i was sure that i might rally rely on you but what is it you wish when miss turner has brought in the tray i will make it clear to you now he said as he turned hungrily on the simply fare that our landlady had provided. I must discuss it while I eat, for I have not much time. It is nearly five now. In two hours, we must be on the scene of action. Miss Irene, or Madam, rather, returns from her drive at seven. We must be at Browning Lodge to meet her. And what then? You must leave that to me. I have already arranged what is to occur. There is only one point on which I must insist. You must not interfere. Come what may, you understand. I am to be neutral. To do nothing. Whatever. There will be, will probably be some small unpleasantness. Do not join it. In it. It will end in my being converted into the house. Four or five minutes afterwards, the sitting room window will open. You are to station yourself close to that window. Yes. You are to watch me, for I will be visible to you. Yes. And when I raise my hand, so you will throw into the room what i give you to throw and will at the same time raise the cry of fire you quite follow me eternally it is nothing very formidable he said 
taking a long cigar cigar shaped roll from his pocket. It is an ordinary plumber smoke rocket fiddled with a cab at, cab at either end to make it self lighting. Your task is to confine to that. When you raise your cry of fire, it will be taken up by quite a number of people. You may then walk to the end of the street and I will rejoin you in 10 minutes. I hope that I have made myself clear. I am to remain neutral, to get near the window, to watch you, and at the signal to throw in the ob this object, then to raise the cry of fire and to wait you at the corner of the street, precisely. Then you may internally rely on me, entirely rely on me. That is excellent. I think perhaps it is almost time that I prepare for the new role I have to play. He disappeared into the be his bedroom and returned in a few minutes in the character of an um, amenable and simple-minded, non-comfortable, clingy man. His broad back black hat, his board black hat, his baggy trousers, his white tie, his sympathetic, sympathetic smile, and genuinely look of peering and benevolent curiosity were such as Miss John, Mr. John here alone, could have equaled. It was not merely that. Holmes changed his costume. His expression, his manner, his very soul seemed to vary with every fresh part that he assumed. The stage lost a fine actor, even as science lost an actor reasoner, acute reasoner, when he became a specialist in crime. It was a quarter past six when we left Baker Street, and it still wanted still wanted 10 minutes to the hour when we found ourselves in Cyperton Ave Avenue. It was already dusk and the lamps were just being lit as we paced up and down in front of Browning Lodge waiting for the coming of its occupant. The house was just such as I had pictured it from Sherlock Holmes' st st stantic description stoic description but the loyalty uh, but the location appeared to be less private than i expected on the contrary for a small street and quite n quiet neighborhood it was remarkably admired admitted there was a group of shabby dressed men smoking and laughing in a corner a scissors grinder with the his wheel two guardsmen <laughs> who were flirting with a nurse girl and several well-dressed young men who were lounging up and down with cigars and th in their mouth. You see, remarked Holmes, as we paced to and fro in front of the house, this marriage rather simplify simplifies matters. The photograph becomes a double-edged weapon now. The chances are that she would be as adverse to its being seen by Mr. Godfrey Norton as our client is to its coming to the eyes of his princess. Now, the question is, where are we to find the photograph? Where indeed? It is most unlikely that she carries it along about with her. It is cabinet size, too large for easy concealment, about a woman's dress, she knows that the king is capable of having her waylaid and searched. Waylaid and searched. Two attempts of the sort have already been made. We may take it. Then, that she does not carry it about with her. Where okay, then? So her banker or her lawyer? There is that double possibility. But I am inclined to think neither. Women are naturally naturally secretive and they like to do their own secreting why should she hand it over to anyone else 
She could trust her own guard sh guardianship, but she could not tell what in direct or political influence might be brought to her to bear upon a businessman. Besides, remember that she had resolved to use it within a few days. It must be where she can lay her hands upon it. It must be in her own house. But it has twice been burglar, bur burglared, burglared, weird, burglared, 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 burglared. Push. They did not know how to look, but how will you look? I will not look. What then? I will get her to show me. But she will refuse. She will not be able to. But I hear the rumble of wheels. It is her carriage. Now carry out my orders to the letter. As he spoke, the glim of the side lights of a carriage came round the curve of the avenue. It was a smart little landu which rattled up to the door of Browning Lodge. As it pulled up, one of the loftmen at the car corner dashed forward to open the door in the hope of earning copper, but was elbowed by the uh, another loft loafer, who had rushed up with the same intention. A fierce quarreler, quarrel broke out, which was incre increased by the uh, the two guardsmen, who took sides with one of the lo the loungers, and by the scissors grinder who was equally not upon the other side. A blow was struck, and in an instant, the lady who had stepped from the carriage was the center of a little knot of flushed and strangling men, who struck savagely at each other with their fists and sticks. Holmes dashed into the crowd to protect the lady, but just as he reached her, he gave a cry and dropped to the ground with the blood running fearly down his face as his fall the guardsmen took it, took to their heels in one direction and the loungers in the other well a number of better dressed people who had watched the scuffle without taking part in it cowered in to help the lady who lady and to attend to the injured man irene adler as i will still call her had hurried up the steps but she stood at the top with her sub her figure outlined against the lights of the hall looking back into the street is the poor gentleman much hurt she asked he is dead cried several voices no no there's life in him shouted another but he'll be gone before you can get him to the hospital he's a brave fellow said a woman they would have had the lady's purse in which if it hadn't been for him they were a gang and a rough one too ah he's he ah he's breathing now he can't line the street may we bring him in ma'am surely bring him into the sitting room there is a comfortable sofa this way please slowly and solemnly he was brought into Browning Hill Lodge and laid out in the particular room. Why, I still observed the proceedings from my post by the window. The lamps had been lit, but the blinds had not been drawn, so that I could see Holmes as he lay upon the couch. I do not know whether he was seized with compunction at that moment. Hang on. Uh, let's look this word up because I am saying it wrong. Oh, T I. Compunction. It was compunction. At that moment, for the part he was playing, but I knew that I never felt more heartily amused of myself in my life than when I saw the beautiful creature against whom I was conspiring or the grace and kindliness with which she waited upon the injured man and yet it would be black blackest 
trance. Black is trance to Holmes to draw back now from the part which he had interested, entrusted to me. I hurried my heart and took the smoke rocket from under my ulster. After all, I thought, we are not injuring her. We are but preventing her from injuring another. Holmes had sat up upon the couch and I saw him motion, like a man who is in need of air. A maid rushed across and threw open the window at the same in state. I saw him raise his hands and at the single... I tossed my rocket into the room with a cry of fire. The word was no sooner out of my mouth than the whole crowd of spectators, well-dressed and ill, gentlemen, ulcers, and servant maids joined in a general strike of fire. Thick clouds of smoke curled through the room and out at the open window. I caught a glimpse of rushing figures and a moment later the voice of Holmes from within assuring them that it was a false alarm slipping through the shouting crowd. I made my way to the corner of the street and in ten minutes was rejoined to find my friend's arm in mine and to get away from the scene of uproar. He walked swiftly and in silence for some few minutes until we had turned down one of the quiet streets which led towards the Ingwer Road. You did it very nicely, doctor, he remarked. Nothing could have been better. It is all right. You have the photograph? I knew where it is. I know where it is. And how did you find out? She showed me. As I told you, she would. I am still in the dark. I do not wish to make a mystery, said he, laughing. The matter was perfectly simple. You, of course, saw that everyone in the street was an accomplished accomplice. They were all engaged for the evening. I guessed as much. Then, when the row broke out, I had a little moist red paint in the palm of my hand. I rushed forward, fell down, clapped my head to my face, and became a patient a pathetic spectacle it is an old trick that also i could fathom then they carried me in she was bound to have me in what else could she do and i into her sitting room which was the very room which i suspected it lay between that and her bedroom and i was determined to see which they laid me on the couch i motioned for air they were complied to open the window and you had your chance how did that help you? It was all important. When a woman thinks that her house is on fire, her instinct is at once to rush to the thing which she values most. It is a perfectly overpowering impulse, and I more than once taken advantage of it. In the case of the Darlington sub substation scandal it was of us to me it was of use to me and also in the arnsworth castle business Answorth castle business a married woman grabs at her baby an unmarried one reaches for her jewelry box now it was clear to me that our lady of of today had nothing to nothing in the house more precious to her than what we are in quest of she would rush to secret secure it the alarm of the fire was at a miserable uh, as mi at a miserable done the smoke and shouting were enough to shake nerves of steel she responded beautifully the photograph is in a rescue behind a sliding panel just above the right bell pool she was there in an instant, and I caught a glimpse of it as she half drew it out. When I cried out that it was a false alarm, she replaced it. Glanced at the rocket, rushed from the room, and I have not seen her since. I rose, and making my ex ex excuse, escaped from the house. I hesitated whether to attempt to, to secure the photograph at once, but... 
the coachman had come in, and as he was watching me narrowly, it seemed surface to wait. A little over perspective may ruin all. And now, I asked, our quest is particularly fi finished. Practically finished. I shall call with the king tomorrow, and with you, if you care to come with me, with us, we will be shown into the sitting room to wait for the lady. But it is probable, probable that when she comes, she may find neither us nor the photograph. It might be a satisfaction to his majesty to regain it with his own hands. And when will you call? At eight in the morning. She will not be up. So that we shall have a clear field. Besides, we must be prompt. For this marriage may mean a complete change in her life and habits. I must wire it to the king without delay. We had reached Baker Street and had stopped at the door. He was searching his pockets for the key when someone passing said, Good night, Mr. Sherlock Holmes. There were several people on the pavement at the time, but the greeting appeared to come from a slim youth and an Ulster who had hurried by. I've heard that voice before, said Holmes, staring down the dimly lit street. Now, I wonder who the dents that could have been. So, that's two chapters so far, guys. We're only 8% of the way through for the book. So, it can't be that easy. Let's be real. Okay. How's everybody holding up? We good? Okay. Chapter 3. I slept at Baker Street that night, and we were engaged upon our toast and coffee in the morning when the king of Broham rushed into the room. You have really got it, he cried, grasping Sherlock Holmes by either shoulder and looking eagerly into his face. Not yet, but you have hopes. I have hopes. Then come, I am all impatient to be gone. We must have a cab. No, my... Broham, bro, Bromem is waiting. Then that will suffice matters. We descend and started off once more for Brining Lodge. Irene Adler is married, remarked Holmes. Married? When? Yesterday. But to whom? To an English lawyer named Norton. But she could not love him. I am in hopes that she does. And why in hopes? Because it would spare your majesty all fear of future announce, announce, uh, annoyance. If the lady loves her husband, she does not love your majesty. If she does not love your majesty, there is no reason why she should interfere with your majesty's plans. It is true, and yet, well, I wish she had been of my own situation. What a queen sh she, sh she would have made. He replaced into a moody silence, which was not broken until we drew up in the ser uh, Serpents Avenue. Serpentine Avenue. The door of Burning Lodge was open and an elderly woman stood upon the steps she watched us with a stoic eye as we stepped from the brougham mr sherlock holmes i believe said she i am mr holmes answered my companion looking at her with a questioning and rather startled gaze indeed my mistress told me that you were likely to call she left this morning with her husband by the 515 train from Caring Cross for the con connection. What? Sherlock Holmes sh 
Krog's back with white with Crogton and surprise. Do you mean that she has left England never to return? And the papers? Asked the king hoarsely. All is lost. Excuse me one second. I gotta blow my nose. We shall see. He pushed past the servant and rushed into the drawing room, followed by the king and myself. The furniture was scattered about in every direction with dismattered so dismantled shelves and open drawers, as if the lady had hurriedly ransacked them before her flight. Holmes rushed at the ball, bell pull, tore pack a small sliding shutter, and plunging his hand, pulled out a photograph in a letter. The photograph was of Irene Adler herself in the in, in evening dress. The letter was subscribed to Sherlock Holmes, ESQ, to be left till called for. My friend tore it open and we all three read it together. It was dated at midnight of the preceding night and ran in the way, this way. My dear Mr. Sherlock Holmes, you really did it very well. You took me in completely until after the alarm of fire. I had not a suspicion, but then when I found how I had betrayed myself, I began to think I had been warned against you months ago. I had been told that if the king employed an agent, it would certainly be you. And your address had been given me. Yet, with all this, you made me reveal what you wanted to know. Even after I became suspicious, I found it hard to think evil of such a dear, kind, old clergyman. clergyman, clergyman. But, you know, I have been trained as an actress myself. Male costume is nothing new to me. I often take advantage of the freedom which it gives. I sent John, the coachman, to watch you, ran upstairs, got into my walking clothes, as I call them, and came down just as you disappeared. Well, I followed you to your door and so made sure that I was really an object of interest to the celebrity Mr. Sherlock Holmes. Then, I rather importantly wished you good night and started for the temple to see my husband. We both thought the best resource was to flight. When pursued by so formidable an antagonist, so you will find the nest empty when you call tomorrow. As to the photograph, your client may rest in peace. I love and am loved by a better man, man than he. The king may do what he will without hindrance from one whom he has cruelly wronged. I keep it only to safeguard myself and to preserve a weapon which will always secure me from, my, from any steps which he might take in the future. I leave the photograph which he might care to process, and I remain, dear Mr. Sherlock Holmes. Barely truly yours, Irene Norton Nee Adler. What a woman! Oh, what a woman! cried the King of Bohem. We, we had all three read this. Epless, did I not tell you how quick in result she was? Would she not have made an admirable queen? It is not a pity that she was not on my level. Form, from what I have been seen of the lady, she seems indeed, indeed, to be on a very different level to you, ma your, to your Majesty," said Holmes coldly. I am sorry that I have not been able to bring your majesty's business to be 
to a more successful conclusion. On the contrary, my dear sir, cried the king, nothing could be more successful. I know that her word is involuntary. The photograph is now as safe as if it were in the fire. I am glad to hear your majesty say so. I am immediately dependent to you. Pray tell me in what way I can reward you. This ring, he slipped an emerald snake ring from his finger and held it out. Upon the palm of his hand, your majesty has something which I val should value even more highly, said Holmes. You have but to name it. This photograph. The king stared at him in amazement. Irene's photograph, he cried. Certainly, if you wish it. I thank your majesty. Then there is no more to be done in the matter. I have the honor to wish you a very good morning. He bowed and turning away without observing the hand which the king had stretched out to him. He set off in my company for his chambers. And that was how a great scandal threatened to off the king of Broham and how the best plans of Sh Mr. Sherlock Holmes were beaten by a woman's wit. He used to make merry over the cleverness of women, but I have not heard him do it of late. And when he speaks of Irene Adler, or whom, or when he refers to her photograph, it is always under the honorable title of the woman. So that was the I guess technically book one of this like book the adventures of Sherlock Holmes <sighs> so that was interesting so I want to talk Oop, that's very loud hang on there we go that's better so I want to talk about the in the first chapter where he tells Watson. I killed her with my trap. Let's see here, where is it? In the first chapter, where Watson goes and and he's talking about how he how he can never understand how Holmes can tell where he is and what he did. And he goes, you have seen but not yet observed. I think a lot of us can understand that because I feel like we take it for granted. A lot of things that we can see on a daily basis. We see a lot of things on a daily basis, but we don't observe them. So whether it's going to work or when we're on our phones or computers, like driving along, we don't, we look at things, but we don't observe them. Can you count how many steps you take to go to work? How many stairs or how many times you take the elevator to work? Like, that was really cool. I liked that. And I think that's a new perspective of life I want to kind of look at. Um, this was a shorter stream tonight only because I wasn't sure how long it was going to be to get through that first part of the book. Um, but if anybody wants to be a part of the book club and talk more in depth, we read the first um, book of the adventures of Sherlock Holmes which was three chapters long um and we will be reading the next part of this book series let me get to my calendar the 16th of October will be the next time we read 
unless something happens then it will be next week but next week is pathfinder um the 16th will be the next time i read the book and the next part two of this book is the red-handed luggage thank you for the reading first time catching something like this i joined part way in chapter three but enjoyed listening oh jim bob thank you so much um i will be this will be up on twitch for the rest of i think i think twitch saves my videos for 14 days if i'm right but I will also be exporting this to my YouTube channel, which is down below in my bio area, if you want to follow there. Um, I do do a little bit different. I don't know. I didn't do it as much in Chapter 3 because a lot of the words were different. But this is old English. I love reading. I love books. But um, I do have dyslexia, as I've told some people in the stream at the beginning and halfway through it. So some of the words... I read and I'm like, that doesn't sound right. So I put it in to Google and I just make sure that I'm saying it right. Um, also, some of the words and some of the languages in this, they portray Germans and they say their names. And I'm like, I'm going to butcher that. Not going to lie. Um, but I hope that you can tune in. Um, I normally would be streaming either a solo game, reading, or um, playing or... Um, playing a group game on Saturday mornings um, at 10 a.m. until probably for like, I think the first part of that, I think for like two hours in the morning, I might just read. Um, this Saturday, I will not be around um, for it, but um, I think I'm going to start doing this more. It seems like a lot of people enjoy it. Um, and I also like discussing the books too. Um, the other option too, Jim, if you have Discord, you can always um, hit explanation point Discord and join the book club um, that we made in our Discord, the Stanford Book Club, um, where after I am done reading The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes, we will be doing a different book. Um, I have one person interested in a our, uh, the Adventures of Alice in Wonderland kind of thing, but they all have to be public domain books for now because of copyright with Twitch. But I hope that you guys really enjoy this, and um, I guess I will catch you guys all on the 16th. Bye!